Hey everyone, it's Brian. In this episode, we're going to talk about sets of points in the complex plane. One set of points you may be very familiar with are circles. And in the complex plane, an equation of a circle is given by this, that the modulus of z minus z naught is equal to rho, where the circle is centered at z naught and has radius rho. And this makes sense when you think about it, because what does modulus mean? Well, modulus is just the distance between those points. So what this is saying is all points that are equally distant from z naught, or rather have an equal distance of rho. And that's how we define circles, right? The set of all points that are equal distant from another point. If I instead change this equal sign to a less than or equal to sign, well now I'm not only talking about the circle, but also everything inside the circle. And so sometimes we call this a disk. If I start talking about not less than or equal to, but simply less than, this would describe just the inside of the circle or the disk without its boundary. So this, this idea of the, just the interior of a circle is called a neighborhood. The picture that I've drawn here is a neighborhood of Z naught, and this idea of a neighborhood will let us classify other sets. So here I've drawn some set or some region with a point. Now, one way we can classify points is whether they're an interior point or an exterior point, or maybe it lies on the boundary. So a point is said to be in the interior or an interior point if I can enclose it within a neighborhood entirely inside the set. In other words, if I can draw this circle without a boundary uh, for some distance around that circle and that neighborhood is entirely enclosed within this set. So this point is an interior point. But if I draw a point here on this boundary, well, can we draw a neighborhood around this point that's completely inside of this region? Well, no, every point enclosed by a neighborhood, that neighborhood would be some part inside our set and some part, some part outside of our set. So this is called a boundary point. So this is a boundary point and this would be an interior point. And as you may have guessed, if I have a point that's not on the boundary and not an interior point, we call this an exterior point. Now, as their names might suggest, all of the interior points make up the interior of our set. All of the exterior points would make up the exterior of our set, and all of the boundary points make up the boundary of our set. Now, if a set contains all of its boundary points, we call that set closed. And if every point in our set is an interior point, we call that set open. Here I've drawn some set, call it S, and do you think this set is open or closed? Well, if you look around the boundary, it's dashed, meaning this set does not contain all of its boundary points or any of its boundary points, meaning it's not closed. Is this set open? Well, pick any point in this set. Maybe I want to even get very, very close to the edge. I want to check if this point is an interior point, because if every point is an interior point, then this set is open. Well, let's see, can I draw a neighborhood around this point? That's what makes it interior. Well, I might have to get a little small, but I can just enclose this point in a neighborhood entirely within S. So this is an open set. Here's some weird looking set. I wanna know whether this set is connected or not. A connected set is a set where any two points can be joined by polygonal lines. What does that mean? Well, take any two points in this set and can I join them with lines or line segments who start where the other one ends? So for example, if I just draw a couple of lines, well, hey, that's a polygonal line and I can connect any two points in this set via a polygonal line. However, if I included this region in my set as well, well, now if I take a point here, there's no way that I can draw a polygonal line and get to my other two points. I can't like 
break through my boundary or jump over my boundary. So this set is not connected. There's two other tiny things I want to introduce here, and that's the idea of a domain in our reference to sets. A domain is simply an open connected set. So if you're connected and every point is an interior point, we call that a domain. Also a set is bounded if the modulus of z for all the z in that set is less than some real number r. So you can think of our circle, our closed circle is bounded. Well, it's actually bounded by another circle. So as long as every modulus of a complex number in your set is less than some other real number, that set is bounded. If that's not the case, the set is unbounded. If you ever hear me use the word region, a region is simply a domain with some, all, or none of its boundary points. Don't let all of these definitions bog down at all. You can always refer back to this video. And I simply just want to introduce them here because they're probably introduced in many other math classes. They won't always come into play in the future. Now that I have those definitions out of the way, let's actually do a fun problem. Let's describe the set of points that satisfy this equation that the imaginary part of z conjugate plus 3i is equal to 6. Well, to do this, we're going to have to introduce some notation. Let's just say that z is equal to x plus yi. Okay, so we can write any complex number in that form. And let's substitute that where I see z into this equation. This will be So I just substituted x plus yi for z. And now next I'm going to take the conjugate of this thing. That has the effect of just flipping the sign in the middle. And now I can factor out the i here. Okay, well What's the imaginary part of this? Well, the imaginary part of this is simply the 3 minus y. That's whatever's attached to the i, that's the imaginary part. And now I can simply solve for y. I think if I subtract 3, I get negative y equals 3, or y equals negative 3. What is this? Well, in the xy plane, this is simply a horizontal line through y equals negative 3. And so this was a pretty basic example, but you could do much more challenging examples and get much weirder shapes like parabolas or hyperbolas, circles, and so on. In this episode, you learned about circles and sets of points in the complex plane. We used a lot of definitions, so don't be afraid to go back and rewatch those again. If you're enjoying this series, please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And hey, I've got something for you to think about. Is the complex plane open or closed? Is it both? It's actually both. And if you ask me in the comments, I'll tell you why. Thanks for watching and have a great day.